Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today we're continuing our investigation into an alternate operating system for this little beauty, the Sony P11Z. This is running a single core 32-bit Atom. It's got hyper-threading, so it's a bit like a core and a half, two gig of RAM, and has the dreaded GMA500 GPU. So far, we've had a look at how badly Windows 10 runs on it. We've also had a look at how well Linux Mint runs on it. And actually, it was pretty good, other than uh, poor internet browsing experience and some difficulty with video playback. Today, we're gonna try Tiny 10. So Tiny 10 is just a massively stripped back version of Windows 10 with lots of bloat simply removed. So before we get started, I'd just like to give a massive shout out to David Shell, the newest member of the channel, bringing the total up to four. A huge thanks to all of you who are supporting the channel directly. That money goes to buying replacement batteries, accessories, and ultimately new devices for the channel. So your support is very much appreciated and will hopefully mean I can bring you a lot more exciting content. So let's get Tiny10 installed. I've put a link to the ISO that I have used below. There, there are other ISOs available. This is the one that I have used. I can't guarantee it's completely free of viruses or spyware or anything else, but it seems to work pretty well for me. In addition to the ISO, you're going to want Rufus and you're going to want a USB stick. Just like installation for Linux, we're going to create a bootable USB using Rufus. So pop your USB in, boot up Rufus, make sure you've selected the correct USB stick as it is going to erase absolutely everything on it. Next up, just select your ISO. And be sure to set the BIOS to MVR. I forgot to do this first time round, so I got this error message. Now just pop the USB stick in, boot the device, and it should boot to USB. If it doesn't, just check the BIOS setting. The setup for Tiny10 is exactly the same as Windows 10, and I've decided to delete all the partitions and reformat the drive before doing the clean install. Now that's done, let's take a quick look around Tiny10. So it's worth pointing out here that a full install of Tiny10 is about six and a half gig, which is very impressive. So I've done an initial boot and all the setup. So let's see how long it actually takes to get into Windows. In order to do that, we're gonna need some way of timing it. And here's my usual timer. So, on your marks, get set, go. So, we're at the menu screen. Let's log in, 007. So, not bad, under a minute. That's um, not too shabby at all. So, one of the things about Tiny10 is it doesn't include any additional software. Now, when I say any additional software, I mean, if we go to the start menu and just see what's installed, you'll see we've got settings. We've got some Windows accessories, which does include um, your calculator and paint and notepad and things like that, and um, WordPad as well. I did think that was not installed, but it is. We've got some admin tools and scrolling down, we've got ease of access, Windows PowerShell, and then Windows System. And basically that's it, that's the lot. So you'll notice that there is no Internet Explorer, which is kind of novel because that means you can't go online. So even though we're actually connected to the internet currently, we can't do anything with it. So to make up for those missing features, 
I've decided for Office, I'm actually going to install SoftMaker Office, the free version. I'll pop a link below. I've chosen SoftMaker Office because it's quite a small package size. It's also compatible with all the Microsoft Office suites, and I use it on my trusty Janata 728. Being free, it is missing some features, but nothing that I would use on a day to day basis. Of course, there are lots of other options for Office suites OpenOffice, LibreOffice, Microsoft Office, to name but a few. You. For internet browsing, I have chosen Chrome. I've chosen that because I have in the past found it to be slightly more efficient for viewing YouTube videos, and I'm hoping that that means that this will be possible. It is worth noting at this point that Tiny10 does actually include Defender, and that Defender is updated on a regular basis. So even on this minuscule version, there is still virus protection built in. I've decided not to bother looking for a replacement for the photo viewing app at this point, although again, when I went online, there there are plenty of other options, but I don't think it's necessary for what we're doing today. And finally, I've decided to use VLC as my media player. This will play back uh, MP3s and just about every video format I've ever come across. And being free, it makes it the sensible option. So now I've got those installed, let's have a play. So we've rebooted, it's all settled down. Let's just have a quick look at TextMaker. So the free version of SoftMaker Office has loads of options you might expect in terms of your initial setup. It's fully compatible with Microsoft and as a rather unique feature, you can even save things as Pocket Word. So you've got the option of Pocket Word for Pocket PC or Pocket Word for handheld PC. So if you are running Windows 10 and you cannot convert files back and forth, SoftMaker Office is a good option as it will open those files natively on your computer. So let's have a go at getting online. So obviously what we want to do is go and boot up a YouTube video to see if it will actually play. And I've left the little bar here to tell us what the uh, CPU is doing. So first of all, let's just try a Google search. So as you can see, that's actually quite fast. This is definitely faster than when we had full size Windows 10 running. So let's pop on the Wikipedia page, see what it says. Okay, that was not exactly snappy. Apparently we're not getting this picture, oh, but that works pretty well. So we can scroll down, that's fine, lovely. Let's head to YouTube and see what happens there with that. Okay, so that took a crazy amount of time to load. Um, what we'll do, we'll just scroll down. Uh, let's just play this one. Oh wow, okay, so this took an enormously long time to actually load and now we've got these stop start images. So I'm just going to, if I can bring the settings up, pop it in the lowest quality mode. Oh no, second lowest quality mode we decided last time. Okay, I'll be honest, I don't think I've got the patience to sit here and try this any longer, so we're just gonna abandon it. Let's come out of that. So we'll give it a minute while the CPU clocks back down, and then I have some sample files. So, like we did before, I've got some video files to try, and I've got an MP3 as well. So we'll start with the MP3, as that should be uh, more than possible to run. As I say, there's no Windows Media Player, so everything will play in VLC, so I'm just gonna double click and VLC can play this. Okay, so it sounds terrible, but that's because of the speakers on this particular device, uh, but it's playing at the correct speed, unlike when we had Linux Mint, and yeah, that's um, perfectly good. It wasn't that long to load, so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to stop that there. I 
also have a video so I've got this one in full HD I'm not even going to attempt to play that um, and then I've got mp4s and I've got um, AVI files so we're going to try let's try this one so we'll try the mp4 first of all let's see what it does so this one's set at 1280 by 720 oh, we've got sound let's make it full screen Uh, distinct lack of picture here. Uh, let me just pause it. Let's move somewhere and see if it shows us a picture. There we go, there's a picture. Right. Oh, okay, got a picture. Let's press play from there. Okay, that's not really working very well. So we'll stick with the MP4 for the moment. And we'll try this one. So this is only 640 by 480. I would like to think it could handle that. Okay, it's a bit glitchy. We'll give it a minute. That was an awful cut. Anyway, that looks pretty good otherwise. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Let's skip forward, see if it keeps up or whether we get loads of glitching. Just taking a second there, isn't it? Just to catch back up obviously even if we make it full screen it's not going to fill the screen because this is only 640 by 480. let's try the avi file as i say in the past i've found they can be a little bit easier for the cpu to decode so let's try the big avi first so this doesn't look too bad it looks like we're dropping frames let's make it full screen hmm a bit glitchy don't know why we've got that bar let's jump forward Yeah, we're clearly dropping a few frames here, but it is playable. So yeah, the AVI is definitely a lot easier to decode. So let's have a look at the 641. So this looks very smooth. Obviously it's a fairly low bit rate, but it looks very smooth. So certainly if you are gonna use this, the AVI container seems to work much better. So now it's settled out, we can see the CPU is only running at about 55%. So that's quite good considering it's playing video. What we can see though is that the memory has gone up dramatically. So sadly, Tiny10 has failed to deliver the performance I was hoping to get. Don't get me wrong, it's way more efficient than running full fat Windows 10, but it's still so laggy as to be unusable at times. Indeed, just doing the updates and a quick virus check took over six hours. The internet is next to useless on Tiny10, where it's fairly usable on the Linux build. Video playback was better on Tiny10 thanks to installing the Windows 7 GMA500 drivers in compatibility mode. Prior to doing that, um, again, utterly useless, couldn't play anything back really. My honest opinion is that Linux was by far superior to Tiny10. I put a community post up on Saturday and Samson1 commented saying I should try Ghost Spectre. This is another massively cut down version of Windows 10, so I decided I would give it a go. Had it have been successful, I would have come back and shown you next week, but unfortunately I installed it so while the CPU idles at about 3% and it only uses 0.6 gig of RAM, I've once again found it pretty much unusable on the internet and video playback on this was worse than on Tiny10. I can't explain why that would be, but it was, even though I installed VLC. I feel the only other real option left to me at this point is to look at rolling all the way back to everyone's favorite Windows OS, XP. If you would like me to do a video on that, let me know. Otherwise, the next time you see this little beauty, it'll have Windows Vista installed on it. I'm sure it'll be simply terrible, but I'd like to see what it was like fresh from the factory. If you've enjoyed this video, as always, a like and a subscribe would be excellent. If you've really enjoyed this video, consider becoming a member so you can support the channel. And if you have any comments, pop them below. I'll try and respond to everyone. As always, my name's Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.